Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Hobby Tip video. This one is going to be about a topic that I guess every tutorial maker touches upon sooner or later, namely metal. I make no claim that this particular video will be the end-all be-all for tutorial tutorials of painting metal. I'm a decent painter, but far from a master of metallics, and there are plenty of better painters out there than me, and also plenty of other really, really good video tutorials, at least I hope mine will be good too, and I recommend that you will watch the others as well. I did however find a fairly easy method of painting true metallic metal to a high tabletop standard while working on my Imperial Guard, and I thought it would make a good video. So here we are. The video will have two parts. First we're going to talk about some background about metal, what it is and how it works and how it looks, and then we'll dive into the tutorial part uh, for a specific way to paint steel. More specifically, the steel that you see on this little dwarf here, my, a member of my Imperial Guard. So you can see his shiny armor and his shiny sword. So a fairly quick tutorial on how to make this particular kind of steel. So let's dive into the background of metal. Started with some physics. Everybody loves physics. So what is metal, or rather what is shine? That's really what we're going to be talking about. So one way to, to describe light is that it's a beam that goes from a source, bounces of an ob object, then goes into our eyes. And through the miracle of evolution, our eyes and our brain can then interpret that as a picture giving us vision. The wave wavelength of the light that bounces off a surface determines the hue that we perceive. Different surfaces absorb different wavelengths, and the ones that remain give a color to the surface. So on a blue surface, everything but the blue light is absorbed, and the blue, blue light bounces into our eyes, telling us that the ob object is blue. On a white surface, all wavelengths are bounced back. And on a black surface, none of the wa wavelengths are both bounced back. Combined with a hue, this means that the value of a color is determined by the amount of light that's bounced back. So a dark blue surface bounces back less blue light than a light blue surface. On reflective surfaces, all light is bounced back, which makes them white. No because of the angle at which the light is bounced back. Shiny surfaces are smooth, bouncing, bouncing light in a predictable way. Go down, hit the surface and go up in the opposite angle. While non-shiny surfaces are rough, they scatter light all about them. Light goes in and it just goes in all, uh, every direction possible. And this is not a binary system between shiny and non-shiny, it's a, it's a scale. You can go from very very shiny to very very non-shiny non or dull, but there's a whole range between them. And this means that even not, uh, objects that are not super shiny can pick up color from or hues from its surroundings. Well, actually value as well. For this reason, a white wall, for example, will look a bit green around where a plant stands next to it. Even though the wall is completely dull and not shiny at all, it will still, the white will still reflect some of that green from the plant into our eyes. And the shinier thing is, the less diffuse that reflection will be until we get a mirror. Polished metal is, of course, very, very shiny, and early mirror, mirrors were even, ma even made from polished silver or copper. Unlike modern mil mirrors though, these things still have a color, so a copper mirror will, will reflect around the world around them, but tints the whole world brown, and a silver mir mirror will tint it gray. And that's why we paint copper mostly brown, silver mostly gray, gray and gold mostly yellow. So that should do it for the physics lesson, let's move on to some miniature painting, but still mostly theory. So I used the term true metallic metal a little earlier, or TMM, that is opposed to non-metallic metal, NMM, a way of painting 
metal or miniatures using actual metal paint. The traditional way of painting, as in painting on normal 2D art, of course uses non-metallic metal, which can be used on miniatures as well. This is an example of this. And when using non-metallic metal, the artist uses paint to create the appearance of metal in that specific scene. They have full control of the, of the lighting, the viewing angle of the scene, so it's a normal approach. They can paint the shadows and the shine uh, as appropriate, and a skilled artist can recreate the look of metal perfectly from a specific angle and a specific lighting source. For miniature painting, however, the canvas is three-dimensional, and a miniature often doesn't have a fixed viewing angle nor fixed lighting, especially for gaming pieces. However, when painting display pieces for competitions and the like, you can control it a lot more. So in those situations, it's fairly common to do non-metallic metal. It's very popular there. The most skilled artists will pick a few viewing angles and paint the metal to look absolutely perfect from those angles, taking into account all the light, light sources and reflections at the level I'm nowhere close to. This is really the only way to paint truly shiny metal. As we said, shininess is a scale, and the shinier something is, the less diffuse the reflection would be. That diffuseness can actually be a, be be a benefit, because a non-perfect reflection is easier to re replicate because than a perfect one. Instead of painting the metal as an actual mirror, just infusing some colors that's picked up by the, on the metal by its surrounding. This allows uh, the non-metallic metal to be a neat technique, even with a low skill level, such as mine, because it just makes the metal look less shiny. This metal here is fairly shiny, it's not perfect, but uh, it does give the impression of being steel at least. Um, and it allows it to look good on gaming pieces, even though it doesn't move around the way it should when we put them around. All because it's not supposed to be super, super, super shiny. But when taking it that extra step, you kind of have to have those set viewing angles and light sources and all of that to account. But when doing it to this level, there are some general ideas and tips that you can use to paint metal, and those are also useful for painting true metallic metal, which is what this tutorial will be about. True metallic metal uses metal paints which contain actual metal, giving them an actual sheen, as you can see, see here. When I turn this around, different parts of the model will shine in different ways. And if the metal color was perfect, like it actually made the thing metal, then you wouldn't need to highlight and shade it, probably it would look like metal. But it's not perfect, and besides the miniatures are miniatures, making the scale look a bit off. And like we know that for because for the same reason we do highlights and shadows on all other things that are miniatures, we don't just paint it a flat color, we want to exaggerate things to make them actually look real as if the world real and life-sized. So for that reason, we, have, we want to take take control of the metal as well. It's no different, really. A common way to paint metal is just to slap down a, a flat color and give it a wash. And that actually kind of looks like metal. Looks like pretty dull metal, but like metal that's out in the open, that's worn, worn down, rusted a bit, could actually look like that. So for that ki those kinds of metal, decent way. There are ways to up that too, but generally when we up the skill, we up the shininess of metal. So by taking control of the shadows, as we do here, you get something that looks more shiny. Another good way to learn about metal is to simply look at it. You can google pictures of steel to get some ideas, but Due to the way metal shines, you don't really get a full 
appreciation for how it moves. And so the really best thing you can do is take a met piece of metal and look at it, turn it around in your hand, go outside, look at it, see how it, how it affects, how the, see how the surroundings affect it, and all of that. And in lieu of you doing that, I will do, try and do it for you in this video. So we'll do that just now, starting in the bathroom. Because in the bathroom, you are quite likely to have some pieces of highly reflective metal that can be quite useful to study when learning about metals. So, welcome to my bathroom. We'll probably return here pretty soon for another Hobbit video in the future. I'll let you guess what the topic for that one could be. But for now, let's take a closer look at this faucet over here. And as we can see, it is very shiny. The first thing I want you to notice is that we can see a reflection of the world around us in this part here. We can see me, I can, you can see me waving my hand both in the shadow on the wall and some slight movement on the faucet. We can also see reflected there are actually two light sources, one up here and one down here. So that's light coming directly from the light in the ceiling into the faucet and bouncing back into the camera. We can also see those same light sources repeated on the handle over here and here. Not as obvious. Those are um, the two individual or like that. They sort of blend together. And we can see the same thing, thing up here. We have one light source there and one light source here. The next thing you should look at is this particular shape of the cylindrical um, faucet that leads to water because cylindrical shapes always have this sort of highlight that follows the length of the shape. We can move this a little bit and see that it's still we have these long shadows and lights that follows the length of it. And one of these length, uh, shadows we can see, we can also uh, we can adjust the environment around it. So one of these, these shadows we can see, the dark line over here, is, is actually caused by an object I placed right next to it. So if we remove that, see that the shadow is gone. There's an, another lighter shadow, maybe it's some other object here, back here, uh, possibly. But we can place this mug back, and we see that the shadow is at once stronger than it was. We can remove it again, and we can place a finger next to it, and immediately it shoots up a shadow, sort of skin color, on the undersi underside of the faucet. So we always have this type of highlights on these cylindrical shapes, even if they are bent. And that's an important point to remember when we move on to painting. Also, not really visible here because the resolution and all of that, but we can see some edge highlights on these shapes over here, but we'll get more examples of that later. So this is an example of a faucet in a bathroom, which is very, controlled environment, if you want to put it like that, uh, and not very realistic to try and replicate on our miniatures. So we'll take it one step, step further and um, go out into the wilderness with some metal objects and take a look at those as well. So see you outside. Which brings us here to the forest. Uh, it's more clearing on a very sunny day. The sun is beaming down on us. And uh, I thought we could look at some objects out here. I couldn't bring the faucet, obviously, but um, I have brought a candle hol holder and um, my airbrush, or one of my airbrushes. That's probably the shiniest object, object in my house. So let's just have a close look at them. Um, you can see that it goes from light over here, and then light over here, and dark here, dark here, and all the way up every time it the surface changes dramatically, well, not every time, but often, the 
light and dark switches around from left to right. And that's something that we'll use, especially on swords and, and the like, to create the appearance of metal. You can also see edges, like this one, is very clearly picked out with a highlight. And on the foot of the holder, you can also see the edge running along here. And you can see reflections in the larger surface, surfaces, like my hand. So actually you can see the sun reflecting up here very clearly. So that's the candle holder. Let's have a look at the very, very shiny airbrush. So as we saw, there we can catch the sun a little bit, <laughs> the nose of it. Uh, as we saw in the bathroom, the cylindrical shapes are highlighted along the length of the cylinder. And you can see as I twist this around slightly, this, the sun reflection that goes straight from the sun into the camera, it moves around along the length of the cylinder, but it moves uh, along a point of light that's always highlighted. And next to it is a point of shadow. And above it, we see the reflection of the sky around the sun. So that part is slightly bluer at the top. And on the container for the paint, you can again see that it's dark, dark, light, light, and a mirrored pattern around an edge. And on the cylindrical shape here also you can see that things are reflecting in a length, lengthwise manner, creating spikes that follow each shape. You can see my hand reflecting as I move around, but it's always in on, along the length of it. That's very clear. If I put my hand underneath it, doesn't change that much, but you should be able to see, because my hand is very pale, you can see more light on the underside of the airbrush. But uh, there are, is some white moss on the ground beneath us so that you can see refle reflected when my hand is not there, perhaps. You can see some greens in the middle here, that's like the horizon, you can see the forest around us, uh, so those are greens and browns, but it's mostly just very dark, very, very dark. But um, I think that's about it, that I, what I have. Oh, <laughs> this is a good shot, you can see, here you can see, very clearly see the tree line reflected in the the metal and the sun and the blue sky around it. So painting something as shiny as this is really really tricky but incorporating some of the colors from the sur surrounding in a more diffuse manner will help sell it as metal. But that's going into very high-end ways of painting. So I think that should do it for our little expedition. Uh, we'll go back to the painting board instead. Painting desk, I should say. Let's have a look at the colors that we'll be using. I will be using colors from Vallejo Metal Colors. Um, I find that these are very, very good. The best out there to paint true metallic metal. They have a very, very nice shine. You can, of course, use others. Use your preference. Uh, the method that we'll be using is going to simulate shine, so you will get more out of it, even if your paint is not that super shiny. Um, a perfect metal paint would of course be able to just cover a surface and then it's, it looks exactly like metal. These are not quite there yet, but uh, these are good. Uh, but as I said, you can use others. The ones I'll be using are dark aluminium, and gunmetal grey, and pale burnt metal. These have uh, this range is very large when it comes to silvery metal colors, and you can use others from it instead. Uh, what we have is a middle color, a dark color, and a very bright color. So you can use any any others to replace that instead. Um, if you want to skip out on one of these because they are quite expensive to buy, uh, then I would recommend skipping the darkest color. Um, that's easy, easiest to replace with other colors. 
So in addition to that, we're going to use Dollar Rowney Paints Gray ink. This is a very, very dark ink, almost black, as you can see, but it has a very slight blue tone, which is very nice. And it's an ink, so it's highly pigmented, uh, making it perfect for shades and glazes. You can use other inks by other manufacturers, no issue at all. You can use plain gray or plain black, I mean, to, uh, instead. Uh, I like the blue tone it gives, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about in introducing other tones at the end of the video. But uh, for these purposes, you can use just the plain, plain no black if you prefer that, or if you have that available. We'll also take a look at the brushes we'll be using. I'm using two different brushes for my um, metal work. These are both very cheap um, acrylic brushes. Synthetic, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, sorry, I'm spaced out there. Um, very cheap synth synthetic brushes, size 1 and size 3. And I recommend using very cheap brushes. The paints that we'll be using, especially these um, Alejo metal colors, they do do a lot of damage to your brush, um, so you don't want to waste your fine brushes on do those paints. I think maybe other manufacturers are a bit kinder to brushes, but I'm not sure about that. Um, so I have one size 1 for final detail and one larger for base work. And I really, really recommend having a at least one fine brush to do, do this with. Um, for a long time I only used this one size 3 and even though it's, it was fairly sharp and still is quite sharp actually, um, doing fine detail st stuff with this is difficult. So uh, when I started using a smaller brush for the, for the edge highlights and, and stuff, I found that painting metal became a lot more enjoyable. So I very much recommend having a small brush to do the detail, detail work. But limit it to that and it will survive a lot, a lot longer as well. So those are the brush brushes. Let's look at the miniature, and you can see him here. And as you can see, there's already metal on him. And the reason for that is that I messed up. I had planned to uh, paint <laughs> the whole guy during the tutorial, but I failed to start the recording for the first part. So he's already base coated in the metal. Also noticeable is that the whole rest of the miniature is already painted. That's because when I paint miniatures I do paint everything, then I varnish it, matte varnish it, and then I do the metal. And the reason for that is that if you varnish the metal uh, you will take the shine away from it. And you, we don't want that, we want shiny metal. So that's what we're gonna do. So um, apologies for messing up with the paint job. But, uh, all I've done is a ba simple ba base coat of dark dark aluminium on the whole miniature. And uh, next we'll, we'll be getting on with the other parts. <coughs> next color we'll use is gunmetal grey to create some shades. So we're gonna put a drop of paint on our dry palette. We don't want to use a wet palette for this because these are all already quite fluid colors, and letting even more water into them will dilute the shininess of them, basically. So you want to keep them as thick as they are from the bottle um, as much as possible. However, we do want to go in with a wet brush and wipe all of, most of that wetness away, so that this brush is moist. That will prevent the paint from flowing up into the body of the brush to the ferrule and uh, kill the brush, so um, it will help lengthen the lifetime of the brush. So we're gonna take some color, we're gonna wick some of it away now that we're doing more detail, detail work, and we're gonna start to apply shade. And as we'll see, or as you'll experience when you try this, there is no defini definitive way to do this. There are some tricks you can use and um, clues, but as we saw on, me on metal parts in the sun, there's no like absolute rules to how 
the highlights will be placed. So we're just gonna do some things really. However, on things like, like swords, there are some common practices. So we'll do a mirror pattern with alternating dark and light on down along the blade with a few transitions. This is a fairly short blade, so we'll be doing uh, two transitions on each side. So here we go from light to dark, the middle of the blade, and on the other side we'll go from uh, dark to light to dark at the bottom of the blade. And one thing to note here is that you don't have to be perfectly symmetrical, it's actually good if you're not. Um, that will help make it look more realistic if you're not perfectly symmetrical. And you also notice that I'm pushing the, always pushing my brush towards the darkest part of the shade. So here I'm going to the tip, I'm going to the bottom, and on this part it's a little bit more tricky, but I'm working towards the middle. Like so. That will help uh, feather the, the uh, color out so that we get a decently smooth tra transition. And because we're working with metal paints, you can see how shiny it is. Um, this will help mask any failures we have in making the transition perfect. Uh, which is to our benefit, of course. You'll also notice that I'm not doing straight lines. They are angled. So I'm going... Um, this is a parallel trapets, something like that, there is a word for it, this, this shape. But you have uh, more dark towards the middle of the blade, and more white or light towards the edge of the blade. Uh, also helps it make, like, make look it, it look more realistic. But as I said, this is not an absolute rule, you can vary it and you should vary it to make it create, look, look more realistic, so you can vary it on the other side of the blade or another miniature in the units to create some variation. But that's the blade, um, the other side we done in a very similar fashion. We're gonna do a piece of armor as well under the normal speed and we'll speed up the rest. So the armor is a bit domed uh, here, the shoulder pad, so we're gonna take the brush and paint it downwards towards the shadow. And when painting metal, your base assumption should be that it's just like any other surface, really. Uh, that's at least my, my assumption. And highlight it in that way, just make it the highlights starker. So we go from very dark to very light. And then on some particular surfaces you can be more uh, experimental. Um, as I'll show you on one other piece here. So, next will you work on this um, elbow guard, whatever it's called. So this one has a very definitive line here, down the middle. And we'll use that to mirror around, much like the sword. So, we'll make, let's see, let's make this part dark. And then that part will be light. So then we have a middle here that's dark. And this is a fairly small surface, so it's a bit difficult to get the effect exactly right. But we'll make that part dark and then make this part dark. So we'll go from dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. And then we'll also add some final darkness to the underside because there's no light here. Like so. And the rest of the miniature I will do under high speed. Um, and then we'll come back to the next step. So yes, 
remember that we have one more special sur service here. This part of the armor that's covering his thigh. It's domed, a bit like a cylinder. And as we saw on the metal, metal pieces in the sun, cylinders have length-wise highlights. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna paint this part dark. Middle part will leave bright. We'll paint that part dark. So it's a white light streak in the middle. That's what we're gonna do. This one. Next, we will use the Dalarani Paints Grey Ink. I'll shake this up. You can use a wet, wet palette for this one. Um, it's no problem at all. I'm using my normal palette here just so it's easier for the purpose of the tutorial. And you can use normal brushes here, or normal uh, your standard brush instead of the special metal metal brush. I'm using the uh, the same brush um, because. Um, you can pick up some metal flakes from the surface and it's just easier not having to change brush all the time. So what we're doing here is we're reinforcing these shadows with some even darker, co darker colors. As I said, if you want to skip out on one colors, skip out on the darker, me darker metal color and just use this step instead, but probably do it twice in thin layers to get a nice coverage. And it's much the same principle here. We're picking out dark parts and glazing in some very intense darkness. And on the middle part of the sword, that's always the trickiest to get smooth, but you work towards the middle. Up or down. And the previous step, we did the broad shadows on the metal. With this one we'll also do some uh, very sharp shadows. So here we're picking out this edge with some dark, dark, dark uh, paint spray ink. We're gonna do that in the other parts of the miniature as well. So that's the sword with some deep shadows. We're gonna do the shoulder, shoulder pad here. Again, it's much the same, we're just reinforcing the shadows. And making sure we are picking out the shadows around this ridge here. And it's gonna be gold. Sure. And then on the shoulder, uh, on the uh, elbow guard, we're going in again, reinforcing the deepest shadows. And on the middle, we want to water our paint spray down a bit and wick most of it away and apply a thin glaze to the middle part here. We'll come, come back to that and cover it again. Really make some stark, stark contrasts. You can see the slight blue tone, or hopefully you can see it, that this color, ha color has. You can actually create some variation by not applying the dark metal color as much and work more with this one to create a stronger blue tone, if you want to. And again, we're gonna pick out the stark shadows, so here between the panels of the armor. that. And then one final bit I'm gonna show you here. His fingers are very very fine detail and 
I mean, if you wanna go high end, you're gonna paint those very carefully. Uh, I'm gonna wa water this one down and use it, uh, the paint spray ink as a wash here. And just more or less cover it. Create some very deep shadows between those finger joints. And you can, of course, be a lot more careful here. Make sure it applies smoothly. Here I got some deep shadow into his beard. Not that big a deal. Just wash the brush and suck most of it away. So that's how we uh, pick out those detail details. And you can be a lot more careful there if you want to. That's a fairly quick way. By washing a metal surface you do take away some of the shininess. Uh, so it's better to apply the shades directly where you want them. So I'll do the rest of the miniature in high speed and then we'll do the next step. So, time for the final step, the edge highlight. We're gonna use the pale burnt metal for that. Let's shake it up. And then put a drop on our dry palette. Oh, two drops. I hate these bottles. Great paints, awful bottles. They are so messy. And now we're gonna use our finer brush, with a sharper point. We're going to really make sure that we moisten the brush up and set the, the water balance right and then we're going to grab some paint and wick those in the way. And what, what we're going to do is a an edge highlight and this is really really important I'll say. So let's start here on the blade. We're gonna use the saddle brush to pick out the edge here. And you can see that's fairly thin. But already that part of the sword looks a lot better. Pick out all of the edge. We'll move to the other side, again using the saddle brush. Wick some more away. Then we're going to do the middle of the blade, that also has to be picked out. Now you really have to a steady hand and whip most of the paint away. And when doing this, it's more okay to, to miss on the light side of the blade. So here I'm working at this angle, following the middle. And here I'm working more towards this side, getting a little bit more paint on that. And here on the tip I can just go fairly broad strokes. So, that's the edge highlight. And now it starts to look like a sword. I'm gonna do the shoulder pad. Here we ha just have one, the one edge down here. I'm gonna do a little dot at the top and the lower edge. And then the uh, elbow guard. We just have this edge. Can use the side of the brush again. Pick that one out. And that edge. And that edge. And finally, have this little piece here above his thigh, and we're gonna pick out the edge on that as well. You can see that it's really the edge highlight at the end that sells the whole thing. So you have to stick it out until you get to that point. Like so. And we're gonna do the rest of the highlights in high speed. And 
then we'll talk a little bit about next steps. And that's the basis of the metal. It's fairly quick. Uh, took me well, almost half an hour to do this, but uh, I did talk during it as well. But um, it's a base coat, two shades, a highlight. Um, and it gives you very nice results. You can take this some steps further. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some scratches in it. Then we're gonna go grab the paint spray ink again. Of that. We're gonna make some very thin lines with this to create some stretches. And for that you have to wick some of it away. And when placing these you can be clever about it and cover up some mistakes you made, some of the less smooth uh, transitions and things like that. And uh, you wanna be clever about where you put them as well in general so that they show up nicely. So. Uh, we'll paint a thin line of this, and then we'll paint a thin line of pale burnt metal under it to create a 3D effect of a ship. And to make that show really well, we're gonna put it in the middle part of darkness. If it's on the bright part, the uh, bright line below the ship won't be that visible, and if it's in the dark part, the dark line won't be that visible. So you want both to be visible for it to look well. So that's one. That one ended up a bit thick. I had not wicked my brush properly. So we'll do another one up here. And here we're getting into a very bright part. So you can do it on the shoulder pad as well. Like so. And we can do another on this side of the sword if we want that. And then we're gonna grab the pale burnt, burnt metal. Quick. Paint it away. And we're gonna come back and pick those edges scratches out. And the thinner the line the better, but um, again the smoothness of, of it isn't super important because the metal shine will cover it. You can see this starts to look like a ship. Something like that. And then the final bit we're gonna do as we saw from our metal parts, we saw that they picked up a lot of color from the surroundings. So what we can do is we can try and simulate that instead of trying to like make it a mirror. We can just try and implement some of those colors into the mid-tones primarily. As, as we saw, they make their way into the shadows a lot. Uh, we have some blues in here thanks to the paint spray ink that re represents the sky. We can use more blue. Um, I really don't really want to do that. Instead, I want to do some uh, red brownish hues to represent the base on some of the downward facing edges. So let's reach for a, an ink. Let's take this one, brown from Game Ink Vallejo. Just gonna put a blob there and we're gonna grab a brush. Let's do the same brush to find, find, find the detail one. Size. One, and uh, thin it down a bit, make a nice glaze. <laughs> we're gonna apply it to the mid tones. Apparently. Have to wick it away properly. And this is meant to be really, really subtle, and I mean, this is taking it to above tabletop quality I'd say. I haven't done this to most of my Imperial Guard, but um, 
it's a thing you can do if you want, if you really want to push your ability. And on the space pieces and things like that, it's something you probably should do. Should consider the environment you're in and try and work those colors into the reflections of the metal. You can be a bit messy. It's not super important. Let's try and get some other co those colors in. Like so. And I saw that I missed a part of the hi highlight. Uh, let's see. I rem remember thinking that I missed a part. Where, where was it? Yeah, on, on his gauntlet. That little match over there. And then the final bit we'll do, we'll do is we're gonna clean up some of the mess we made. Uh, managed to stay pretty clean for the most part, but there are some bleeding over into other areas so we're gonna fix those up. So we're going to grab some of those colors. We'll need a sepia for the feather and the yellow and I think that should do it. Do some some of that on the beard as well. That's a dark brown color. Works on most stuff. A little blob here. And then because these are not metal, they are meant to be matte, we're gonna grab some matte varnish and mix this into the paint. Sorry, we'll mix this into the paint. You wanna shake those the matte matte varnish up real good. You can of, of course just paint it and then apply a matte varnish over it, but I th find that the matte, matte varnishes I, I use is quite difficult to get a good coverage of, so if you mix it into the paint instead, you get better results. And here I'm using a normal brush, usual. And you mix in some of the matte varnish, and then we're gonna do the cleanup. So here, let that over a little bit. On the feather. And if you get a little bit on the metal, it looks like shadow, it's no problem. Something like that. Oh, his hand as well. And that's gonna do it. That's how you paint some pretty high-end metal. Not the highest end, but pretty good. So, we have reached the end of the video, and I thought it could be good to make a little little summary at the end, because it turned out to be a pretty good, pretty lo long video. So, this is the warp model that I was painting. It's all finished up, um, gold included. I'd make another video on that someday, but not not for now. Um, but we talked about a lot of concepts here, so we thought it be good, could be good to summarize it all. So, metal is shiny, as we know, and to paint something shiny, you want to, want to take control of your place, the shadows, and the highlights, and everything in between. You also want to try and infuse some colors of the surrounding into the thing you're painting on. The most important th thing I would say when painting metal, both both non-metallic metal like this one or true metallic metal like this one, is to keep the transitions smooth and plenty. You want to go from light to dark in a sh short space of time and you want to keep it smooth. Then you want to have some very, very sharp edge highlights. That's what gives it gives us the impression. And then when it comes to where to place these transitions from light to dark on the surfaces. That's that's the tricky part. Um, you can learn bits of it by looking at metal as we did. But there are some some surfaces th surfaces that are, are just really tricky. But there are some common practices on cylinder cylinder shapes, like on his 
thigh guard here or these uh, arm armor you want to keep the highlights the length of the object and otherwise on uh, things that have a sharp edge to work around like this a sword and an air blade you want to keep it in a mirrored pattern around that edge going from dark to light to dark no other side light to dark to light that will help help create the impression of metal but other than that it's just a matter of trial and error and testing and learning and oftentimes oftentimes there is no correct answer unless you're doing super 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 high high end work in which case you have to really know where to place those lights and shadows and also when doing at least somewhat dull metal it also it's also not not as important as when doing super 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 shiny metal in which case it's a mirror and you have to really really, really know what you're doing so that's all i have to say i think i'll put up some pictures of this guy at the end so you can see better what he looks like but um, that's gonna do it thank you very much for watching it's been a long one but uh, i hope it was at least somewhat usable usable and um, i guess i'll see you on the next one and um, yeah we'll see what that will that'll be cheers oh and they final little bit of curiosa speaking of physics you know we mentioned that the sky is blue we want to pick that up that up in the metal as we paint it but we didn't talk about why the sky is blue and you can look this up and there's something of ray light scattering some, something like that it's physics stuff but i like another explanation better and i, I like it so much that i just thought i'd throw it in here because it's so neat because air is blue that's why the sky is blue this you can talk about how it refracts lights in weird ways and all of that but in the end it's air that's covering our sky and light goes in and more blue light comes into our eyes from the sky making it appear blue and there's also another example of this if you look at mountains that's far away in the distance they tend to look blue and that's because the air between you and the mountains are blue and the farther away the mountains are if you have several ridges on a row that you can see farther and farther behind the further behind they get the further away they get the more blue they become and darker darker as well so air is blue therefore the sky is blue i just find, find it curious thank you for watching